on Sunday and so we're just going to go back over those again. Um, church next uh, this Sunday coming up is going to be out in the amphitheater. We're excited about that. It's going to be awesome. That's at 1030, not 930, 1030. Combined and service. Combined service. So it'd be great if you guys can show up. Don't forget to bring your chairs, your camping chairs, whatever uh, comfortable chairs or we have our metal chairs for you as well. So that's 1030 Sunday. And then our men's study is starting back up. So on May 1st in the morning at 730, guys, we'll be meeting here at the church. And then also on Thursday at May 7th at 7 p.m. here at the church as well. Two different men's studies. So hopefully you guys can get plugged back in there. Uh, any questions, uh, contact Chuck. We're here at the church. We'll let you know. Also, women's study is going to be starting again uh, May 7th on Thursdays, um, 1230 in the afternoon and also at uh, 630 at night. The women, Vicki, was the one to contact there, or again, here at the church. And the last one is, is the youth group. Uh, we will be having the middle school on the 5th, which is a Tuesday, at 6.30, down at the bridge. And then also the high schoolers the next day, Wednesday, uh, the 6th, at 6.30, down at the bridge. And so this is exciting, guys, getting to be back together. And uh, just keep praying for each other, and yeah, um, I'm looking forward to it. So it'll be really good. And uh, yeah, this morning we're going to get into the devotions. Sean has one for us, and I'm going to go ahead and pray for it and get into it. And Lord, we worship you, and we're so thankful. And uh, we're thankful that we get to get back into this, um, seeing each other again and meeting together. Uh, it's encouraging, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we just thank you for all the provision, Lord, and uh, just healing those that need healing. And we continue just to lift up the sick to you, Lord, and your perfect ways of dealing with what you want to do with them in their lives and how you grow us closer through that, Lord. And we praise you for that. Just thank you for your word and how awesome it is. And it's just, it's so great for any time, Lord. And it's powerful and living. We're so thankful that you have that for us. And so we just ask that you would just teach us this morning and uh, just show us what you want us to see in you and your character and, and how we can draw closer to you, Lord. We love you so much. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we're looking forward to being able to be with you guys on Sunday morning as a church family again in our amphitheater. Uh, we still want to uh, meet out there for a while, like I said on Sunday, to just kind of exercise some caution and uh, be a witness to our community that we're still uh, supporting the uh, effort to involve some social distancing. Um, however, we're going forward in the way that the Lord's leading us, and um, I am sure as businesses are going to start to reopen and some of you guys can go and get your hair cut that everybody's kind of uh, having a sigh of relief to see things start moving back to um, uh, uh, somewhat of a, a normal life where we're not isolated and, and um, kept apart from one another. But I, I mention that because tensions are still high. Um, and I probably don't have to tell all you guys that in, in marriage relationships and relationships and familial relationships with the kids and, and, and um, uh, being stuck at home together, uh, it, it can cause uh, tensions and, and patience to run thin. And, and even out in uh, everyday society, I was crossing the road the other day in my truck and I pulled across the highway and it was, it was not even close. It was like a quarter mile down the road. And, and, and this, the, obviously the guy thought I had pulled out in front of him or something. He's honking and he's um, uh, waving to me. 
uh, and, and usually both hands in the air and, and he was frustrated and uh, I really just believe because everybody's tensions are high and patients are running thin. I even actually had an opportunity to talk to some brothers today that were um, having a dispute, uh, some Christian brothers and, um, and uh, they got it worked out and they were committed to doing so but the, the problem was a minor thing but it escalated I think because of tensions are high and patients are running thin. And then scripture gives us some encouraging words, I think, for us in light of that, as we look at, like Curtis said, the nature of God. And in 1 Kings chapter 8, still in Kings chapter 8, verse 23, it says this, And he said, The Lord God of Israel, there is no God in heaven, above or on earth, below like you, who keep your covenant and mercy with your servants who walk before you, with all of their heart. And, and I think it's safe to say that we all love mercy when it's directed towards us. <laughs> for example, when the police officer who stops us for a traffic violation decides to let us go with a warning instead of giving us the ticket that we might deserve, we love that mercy that he shows to us. Um, likewise, when we forget something and it may have an effect on others around us, and yet they are patient and understanding with us instead of being critical or angry. We love that mercy that they give to us. Or like when someone, or when someone's late and you're, you're left waiting around for them like our intern keeps us doing every once in a while. We show him mercy. We love you, Luke. <laughs> but even though we love getting mercy, you know what the truth is, is mercy is a, is a tough thing to give to someone else when they've wronged us or they've caused us harm. And for the most part, when someone does something that affects us in a negative way, we want justice. That's kind of our, our first reaction, to want justice. We want the offender to pay for what they had done to make right the harm or the loss that we have occurred. In fact, we, we probably even take it one step further in our, in our sin nature. We don't, we don't just want justice, we want revenge. And uh, we want them to pay maybe even seven times as much uh, for what they have done to us. And fortunately for us, God, our God, our Father in heaven, does not possess this type of nature that we have. Our God is merciful towards us, even in regards, this is a cool thing, as we read here in, in 1 Kings, even in regards to the promises that he has made to us. And we all know that if God's faithfulness to keep his promises to us were conditional to our faithfulness, then we would never receive what God has promised and we'd never be blessed by God. And this is because we're not always faithful like God is faithful, but God is merciful towards us. And when we do wrong or when we make a mistake or when we forget, we know that if we turn our hearts back towards God, he will pour out his mercy Upon us. Remember in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23, it declares this saying, The steadfast love of, of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end, and they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And, and this is the nature of our God. <coughs> and this is the only reason why any of us are ever blessed. It's not because of who we are, it's because of who He is. Our God is merciful. And we love his mercy, but we cannot forget, church, listen, we cannot forget that we are called to be like him. We are called to love, listen to that, we are called to love giving mercies to other, others around us. Jesus instructs us of this in Luke chapter 6, verse 36, where he said, Therefore, be merciful just as your father also is merciful. And then in Micah chapter 6, verse 8, it says, He has shown you, O man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. See, God has shown us what is good. And He's shown us what He's required of us by first demonstrating it to us and using our failures as an example to show us His mercy. So this morning, I pray that we would choose to be like our Heavenly Father in those times when, when tensions are high and when patients are running thin, and that we would take the opportunities to show one another mercy today. And I pray that we would love mercy and see that mercy is better than justice and that mercy is certainly better than revenge. And so may the Lord keep you, and may the Lord bless you and keep you, and may the Lord make His face to shine upon you. 
and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.